granular audio processor or a texture synthesizer and a reverb and a delay and an oscillator <laughs> and once you get your head around it it's a lot of fun Today's video, I'm not going to do a, a kind of deep dive of all the features and functions because there's a lot of good videos out there that already do that. But I would like to demonstrate some musical applications. I'll just kind of show you what sort of patches and, and music you might create if you purchase speeds for yourself. Let's get into the first patch. Actually, I am going to do a quick overview of how this works. So audio uh, passes through beads and you can capture segments of audio using the, the seed knob here. And then you can do various things to this audio. You can change the size of this segment. You can change the envelope of the playback. So this is a triangle to an inverse saw and square wave here. You can go in reverse mode as well, which is cool. And um, you can change the pitch of the audio. You can freeze the audio and then use the time knob to scroll through the frozen audio. You could add reverb to that. And you can use the density knob to control how many times it plays back. And I guess this is how this becomes a texture synthesizer. Anything else I'm missing? Um, I mean, there are other things you can do. You can also clock it. And you can change the, the playback quality. There are four different quality modes down to lo-fi. Kind of dirty sounding. Everything is modulatable also.
So that's kind of how it works, roughly. doing a kind of shimmer style octave delay kind of effect and it sounds blinking lovely <laughs> and it's super easy to do you basically just want to crank the pitch all the way up so you get this kind of twinkly sparkly two octaves above whatever you put through and as you can hear I've got it frozen just now so if you find the kind of loop that you like, just hit the freeze button and you'll have that forever. And you can even scroll through and see what else might have been captured. Let's take a listen to just, just beads doing the effect. <laughs> All these high arpeggios that keep fading in and out. Slightly data bender ish. This patch kind of speaks for itself. size knob all the way up it creates a delay effect but if you have 
audio frozen and you turn the size all the way up, it creates this beat slicer effect. Which is really nice. And because I've got beads clocked by palms, the slices are in time with the OP1. So, the density knob kind of chooses the division or multiplication of the clock. And the time knob scrolls through the sample. So what I've done is I've played um, a kind of half finished track that I've been working on. I've basically put that into beads and I'm scrolling through it. And you can use the pitch wheel to alter the pitch of your sample. Um, but what I've opted to do is use the Keystep Pro into the pitch input, which is volt per octave, which means I can play the sample. <laughs> which sounds really cool. And I'm bringing in a bit of bit crush for that kind of Wu-Tang noise and sorry I also who am I apologising to <laughs> I have also recorded a <laughs> sequence on the key step so let's activate sequence there we go Yes. <laughs> so cool. It's a totally different way to use a sampler, I think. Maybe it's not. It's the scroll through element that, that gives it its uniqueness. because you can take it to different places. Oh, the drums are getting dirty there. I've also got a bit crusher on the effects aid, so it's like double crush. Oh man. size knob all the way up to infinity, beads becomes a pretty comprehensive delay effect. So let's check that out now. One of the cool things about it is 
you've got this shape control which allows you to put an envelope on your delays. also got a pitch control. When you bring the feedback up on the pitch, it goes kind of spirals. <laughs> the pitch feedbacks as well as the, the um, audio. Quite an interesting effect. And you've also got the different quality controls which affect both the time and the uh, the quality, the, the sound of the delay. Instantly getting noisier and more analog sounding. freeze the audio that's when you get into the sort of beat slicer territory <laughs> <laughs> okay. That is pretty crazy. Thank <laughs> you. 
inputs unpatched then beads will metamorphose into a wavetable oscillator which is pretty incredible so let's check out some of the sounds available so in this mode the time knob now allows you to scroll through the wavetable Feedback knob allows you to pick the different waves, um, yeah, different banks, that's it. <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> Very throaty. And of course you can modulate this stuff. You could have an envelope like maths modulating the um the wave table. FM there, isn't Many possibilities. Always come back to that one though. And I did notice as well if you do change the quality, it's a bit here. Ooh, that's nice. Thank <laughs> you. 
So, to summarise, Beads is an interesting module which is not instantly intuitive. You do need to kind of read the manual and you need to maybe watch some videos, but once you get your head around it, it's very good. I tend to use it less as a live tool and more as a, a studio tool, as a, a kind of sound designer. I think it's not a module that you can just mess about with on the fly, you need to have a bit of planning and a bit of experimenting and then you can create some very good sounds. So yeah, I hope you've enjoyed the video today. Please leave a like and a comment, etc. And I will catch you all soon. Take it easy. Thank you.